You ready for some more X-Cub, Mary? Let's do it. Oh yeah. All right, so as you can see, we have the X-Cub and it's on the floor now. So we ran out of room up on the table. This thing is becoming pretty big. So we're gonna put the wings on. As you can see, we got the spar out because you do need the spar. And we're gonna put the wings on and we're gonna finalize the position of the lift struts and the jury struts. So we're gonna do that first. And then um, really the main reason we're putting the wings on is because part of the build process is when you do the horizontal stabilizer back here, you need to measure you need to measure from the corners of the wings back to the horizontal to make sure you know this is even back here yeah. so that's why we're putting the wings on right now so as you can see we got the spar in it fit really snug it was perfect it wasn't tight it was perfectly snug so i've got it pretty much even i measured it out uh, we do have to take the windshield off so out of the box it's just taped on so let's carefully pull this off Okay, so this is where we're gonna probably need Mary's help. Okay. Uh. So starting off with our nylon thumb screw wing bolts, you're mm -hmm. gonna need the four longer ones. I did check the threads in the wings. Um, and they thread in perfectly, so. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach the lift struts to the bottom of the airplane, get those in the final position, and then we'll start doing our measurements. M3 by 15, pretty much the same bolt we've been using this whole way, and a couple of M3 washers. Okay, so those fit in the slot really nice. Those are perfect. I don't know if Mary can show it, but maybe over here. I know it's really tight and close, but the holes are actually kind of oblong. So there's, uh, you know, room <laughs> yeah. for some adjustment. But anyway, that fits really nice, guys. Really, really nice. So now we can mark these. Okay, here, let me go over there. And yeah, that's actually perfect. Like, I'm pretty happy with that. So we'll mark these, and then when we get the wing back off on the bench, screw these in, but we'll have our marks. So let me get a felt tip marker, and I'll put three dots. Perfect. Looking good. All right, so we got our marks up there. So then when we get the wing back on the table, we can uh, drill those, mm -hmm. screw the thread, or screw the screws in, and then reinforce the threads with CA. Kind of, you know, the whole same process we've been doing. But those are marks, those are good. As you can see, I'm on a creeper. So this plane is big enough to you can use a creeper. Some serious work. Works great. <laughs> <laughs> so this side was a little trickier. The other side went right in. This side required the finesse of Mary. I want to get rid of some metal right here. And then, mm -hmm. the, yeah, and then they won't touch. But other than that, it's all in. All right, this is looking good. Let's move on to the horizontal stabilizer. All right, on to the stabilizers now. So we're going to have the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer. This step, we actually have to pull the elevators and the rudder off of the stabilizers. So now we got our fin and the horizontal. So we're gonna start with the horizontal stabilizer first. Now, when you get it into the slot, mm -hmm. you're gonna be cutting away covering. I don't know if you remember on the carbon cub, but you're gonna cut away some covering. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we know it's gonna come down here and you can see there's some wrinkles here. So we're gonna seal this center section up, top and bottom. Like around the side. Yeah, we're gonna seal it up kinda. Just so when you cut it away, you're not cutting through wrinkles and all that. All right, so we're gonna just kinda make sure all this is tacked down right around where we're gonna be working. All right, so that looks pretty good right there. 
So remember, we're only just working right kind of in this area for now. Yeah, yeah. do the other side too. Yeah, and we're gonna slip through. Yep. So that's gonna get kind of held down. And, and then we're gonna go just do the same thing on the other side. No wrinkles where we're gonna be gluing. Cool. All right, so we got the horizontal stabilizer here. Here's our marks. So you get the little, the pen mm -hmm. marks. Or so if you use blue tape or whatever that way, well, you know it's the bottom. Yeah, exactly. So let's slide this in. I'm actually worried about these wrinkles. I'm thinking I gotta get rid of these wrinkles because I think what's gonna happen here, what I don't want to happen is, come on, in there. Yeah. Yeah, you can see. See it's how it's bunching up the wrinkles? Yeah, you can see it. It's creasing it. See it as it comes out the other side? Oh, okay. Yeah, you don't want that yeah, to happen. Yeah, so it's creasing it. Yeah, see that? It's a crease there now. But I don't want that. So I'm gonna actually shrink all this, this whole thing, because I don't want the, the wrinkles getting all bunched up. All right. Perfect, I like it. Now let's go do a test fit. All right, once again, I'm gonna gently slide this through. So far, so good. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> so now what we gotta do is basically just find its center point and then make sure, because see all that adjustment? Mm -hmm. So you gotta really be careful where you glue it in. So that's where we gotta measure. I eyeballed the, the gap here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just see how close I am. So we're at like- 37. 37 almost. It's actually like, 369 millimeters. Okay, so yeah, it's way off. But like I said, I just eyeballed it, so it's gotta go that way. Mm -hmm. 362? Ooh. One millimeter. Wow. Not bad. I'm splitting a millimeter now. <laughs> 363, I don't know, let's see if I, I might move it too much now. 360, one, two, three. Oh, there you go. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. That's as close as I'm gonna get it. Okay, so it's centered left and right. So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little tick mark right here. Mm-hmm. And then a tick mark on, that side. on this side as well. So let's start measuring this way. So this is, I'm gonna need your help, Mary, like uh, before. So you might, I don't know if you wanna set the camera on stand or. So we got the tape measure out. Uh, we're going corner to corner. And we're just gonna start taking measurements. So Mary's got it right on the corner. We can see we have the ailerons down. So you want the corner of the wing, not the aileron. I'm gonna push it in a Okay, yeah, we're gonna hold it tight. I'm going to my corner of my horizontal stab. I'm looking at 50 and 11 sixteenths. Okay. okay, so go around the other side. Let's just see what we get. So we're trying to get a starting point here. It's close. So we're at 50 and 15 sixteenths. Okay, so we're long on this side. So you have to go in by... So we're long on that side, one eighth. Yeah. <laughs> Math. <laughs> <laughs> so we gotta shift it an eighth of an inch that way. Yes. But then it's gonna change that measurement. Not by much. Not by much. But you see, you can, you can see it's a lot of fiddling around here. But this is very right, important. Pu I'm pushed in. Good? Mm-hmm. And it's 50 and three quarter. 50 and three quarter. Well, there you go. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, so we're the same this way now. But now I gotta check that way. <laughs> All right, we got it. So as you can see, there's a lot of wiggle room there and you gotta measure, re-measure, check the back and then do it again, and tap and then you, know, you probably went too far and then you gotta do it again. But anyway, just be very patient because this is a pretty crucial uh, alignment. So you gotta make sure the horizontal stabilizer is in as much of alignment with the wing as you can. Uh, it just makes to a nice flying plane and visually it's gonna look correct. You know, if you got it all jacked up and 
it's just gonna look stupid, especially on playing this nice. But anyway, we have it perfect. We have each side 363 millimeters on the back. And then corner to corner was 50, I know we had to switch to inches, uh, 50 and uh, three quarter, heavy, heavy three quarter. So basically it's perfect. So once you get it perfect guys, don't sneeze, <laughs> don't even move until you get your line drawn. So you're gonna take your felt tip and make sure this Hopefully is it's working. working correctly, I know, right? We've got all our marks, so let's slide it back out. So when we cut the covering away, they want us to cut inside that mark we made. So when you do the glue, um, you can't see bare wood, basically. Your, your covering is inside the joint. So we're gonna mark three millimeters in. From the line we made. From the line we made, one, two, three. When you're doing this, you want to use a very, very brand new sharp razor edge so you don't have to, you know, force it through the covering. Just a gentle score and it'll come up because what you don't want to do is push so hard that you're cutting into the balsa. There we go. No pressure. Yeah, very light. Ha! Uh, that was, I made a joke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, up, right over my head, Mary. Oh my gosh. All right, so we got it all pulled away. Mm -hmm. And you can see how, I'll hold it sideways so you can see. See how it came up a little bit right there? Yep. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the iron back out and seal that these edges back down. All right, everybody, it's time for glue, or epoxy, I should say. Uh, we're using the same 30-minute epoxy that we did in the very beginning when we did all the uh, control horns. So uh, we got plenty left. But yeah, 30 minute for something like this. Do not use five minute. So let's go, let's mix up some epoxy. So we're gonna need a decent amount because we gotta cover the top and bottom. So two equal parts. All right, <laughs> start brushing it on. So we got all the epoxy on there. Now we're gonna slide it into our lines. All right guys, we're just cleaning up the big glue globs here. And then we're gonna do some measurements and just do our final tap adjustment here to our lines. Everything's looking good. This part's a little messy. Lots of paper towels handy. And lots of isopropyl alcohol. So we remember our numbers from before. I'm at my lines. Let's see how off we are. So we want like 50 and a strong three quarter. You good? Mm-hmm. So that's looking good. That's really? perfect. Yep. Wow. So we'll go to the other side. I'm very impressed. Well, I'm at my lines, so that's kind of it almost puts us right there, right off the bat. Might just need a little tap tappy. Perfect. All right. Wow. Let's do our millimeter adjustment this way. This was 363 millimeters uh, left and right. So those are cracked. So we, sh in theory, this should be cracked too. 300, I'm making sure it's at the line there. I think it was like a scant 63. 362, it's like right there. Perfect. That's it. Good job. Okay. Oops, I'm done with this. <laughs> First try. Perfect. I think it looks amazing. All right, guys. You can see, you know, doing all your measurements ahead of time, when it comes time to gluing, you just push it in there right up to your lines and first try, we had it. But, um, you know, like a lot of things, it's all the prep work. And then when it comes time, comes time for uh, the glue, you just know right, right, right where to go. And, uh, really pays off. But yeah, so we have to let this dry now uh, before we can move on to the rudder. Um, I just 
don't want any chance of bumping this. So the next step is the vertical fin, you know, the vertical stabilizer. But like I said, I don't want any chance of bumping this. So we're gonna just, we're gonna wait till the morning to continue on. And basically the same process. We're gonna glue the fin in and uh, make sure it's, you know, 90 degrees, plumb. But yeah, I'll see you in the morning. So we're out here the next day, checking our uh, horizontal stabilizer. It looks great. All the epoxy dried perfect. The joints look great. We're ready to move on to the next step. And next step, we do not need the wings on. So we're gonna take the wings off and get the fuselage back on the table. Let's get the wings off. All right, wings are off. We got the fuselage back on the table. Time for the vertical fin now. So a lot of the same techniques and procedures. Uh, this is a little, little easier, by the way, I feel like, than this one. There's less measuring. Uh, but yeah, you can see the covering is on. So we same uh, kind of principle here. We're gonna slip it in. Let's just see how it fits. Goes in really nice. Really the only measurement you have to do here is make sure the fin stays at 90 degrees when the glue dries. So you can see there's a little bit of wobble. But first thing we gotta do is make sure it's all the way in. It is pushed down all the way, level in the back, so that's good. And we gotta draw some lines. So we got our two lines on both sides of the fin. Now you can see this forward piece here has a little wood strip right there that we gotta cut out. You wanna go three millimeters in, so let me get my little, my little ruler. Okay, so that's ready to get cut out, that little strip. And then after we cut it out, we're gonna seal the edges right there. All right, here we go, sharp blade. And we are on the lower line, okay? So we have the wood exposed all the way around now. I'm gonna wipe off those lines and then seal this edge down. Same thing, our inside line, we gotta peel that little strip away, okay? So let's do that. All right, so let's wipe the marker off and then we're gonna seal that edge up when we do that edge. There we go, look at that. So you can see why they have you measure three millimeters down. Because if you just cut on that line you initially draw, then you're gonna potentially have exposed wood, but see how I cut it below and then what happens is it goes under. So now it looks just perfect. Another thing you gotta look out for, okay, so you can't just glue it in because you gotta make sure it's 90 degrees to the <coughs> um, horizontal stabilizer. So look at all this play here. So, you know, if you're not careful, you could glue it there, you could glue it there. That's a decent amount of play. That's probably, you know, 10 millimeters. Yeah, you can also see on the like yeah. down there, down below. So you gotta really be careful. What we're gonna do, and this is what the manual says, is you gotta get a, um, a square. We had an old, um, just triangle, you know, drafting square around, and we have to cut a notch in it because you can see the fuselage right here. You can't put just a normal 90 degree up to it. So we cut the notch, now we can put it. And you can see just how off that vertical fan is so it actually has to come over to right there but it wants to sit over there so what we're gonna do is on this this side on the bottom we're gonna shave off some material so on the right hand side down here so this this edge here so I'm gonna just put a little mark just so I remember you know kind of which edge we're taking off of so let's just start kind of... Just a little bit? Yeah, I'm going to be going at kind of an angle because remember, I don't want it flat because I don't want to take off any over there. This is definitely a case of go slow. You know, we'll take a little bit off at a time. Now you can see, you won't be able to see on camera, but I can see it's at a slight taper now. 
so close. Pretty good. Yeah. I mean, every time I do this, it's getting closer and closer. We're on the right track, guys. This is looking good. It's like half a millimeter off. And with that little variation, I can actually, you know, have it dry. I can run a piece of tape over because it's not very much pressure holding it. Before I was having to kind of really, mm -hmm. you know, put a decent amount of pressure there. But I think I can, I can put a piece of tape. It definitely made a difference, so I'm happy with that. Okay, keep that handy because we're gonna need that for gluing. We're gonna brush in the pocket. Okay. All right, set it in there, and then we're gonna. Oh, don't look too bad. No, not too bad at all. Okay, and we're getting the big stuff off, and then we'll come back and do final wipes. So we'll make sure that's good, and we're gonna tack this in position. That's very, very good, I'm happy with that. So what I'm gonna do is though, is run a piece, because I do need it to just hold in that position a little bit. So we're good with that. So we're gonna let him dry in that position with this piece of tape here. Now, both, now this one, we have to hot weld just a little bit over here. All right, so that's all um, looking pretty good up there. Pretty happy with that. So let's clean up this last bit here. Be careful of our tape. Just keep checking, making sure this looks good. Looks nice. Perfect. All right, we've confirmed it on that side too. And we're still flush back here, remember guys. All right, I want to move one more final wipe on both sides and I think we're done. All right, we're all set. I actually took off that little support piece of tape. Uh, I, you know, triple checked it with our square and it was actually, it's so negligible that we just left it the way it was because the sanding that we did on the bottom, I think that was enough, but we don't have the support there anymore, so. And the epoxy's already starting to set. Yeah, and you know, it's been 15 minutes and we're working with 30 minutes, so the epoxy's starting to set. So I'm just gonna leave it and I'm, I'm happy with it. It looks great, so done. Gotta let it dry now. We're gonna move on to the actual control surfaces themselves. So we got the two elevator halves here and then the rudder. We're gonna work on one at a time. You see you gotta glue in the Robart hinges. So these are not glued in. So we pulled the pins out, or sorry, the hinges out and basically just verify that they do fit. Obviously they were in there when the plane came, but just make sure you can go in you know, to where you want it and they go in relatively easy. So we've done all that. I also have taken the, the, uh, the heating iron and you know, cleaned up the inside edges here because once these go on the plane, you're not, you're not gonna really be able to get to them too easily. So that's all looking good. We're gonna put some 30 minute epoxy on here on the actual hinge, the teeth here, and then put, take a toothpick and get some down in the hole. And then you're gonna insert it and you want the pin halfway on the edge here. And then you wanna let it dry perpendicular, you know, that angle. Mm -hmm. So basically you don't want it to dry like that because then, you know, the hinge won't work. So we're going to mix up, mix up some 30 minute again. Don't need much for these steps. So we're just going to do little, little batches for each one. All right, so before we start putting epoxy on there, another thing the manual says is to prevent epoxy getting into the actual hinge, uh, Vaseline. I know some people use this and uh, basically just get some on and just literally just, I know it seems kind of weird, but just put it on the hinge area. And that way the epoxy cannot glue your hinge shut. Let's get some epoxy down in the, the hole. Good to me. A little on the end. 
There we go. So we'll get one in there. And we've got, just kind of twisting it as we go in. And we're gonna push it in to where, it's gonna be hard to show you, but you can see this, the shiny pin is basically halfway covered. And then we also want it to be 90 degrees. So we'll check that kind of, there we go. So that one's good. Let's leave that one like that. Let's move on to the next one. So the actual silver, the metal pin mm -hmm. is halfway in. It's in line with the actual edge of the control surface, okay? So when you made it up into the actual airplane, the other half of the pin will get covered. Okay, so all the pins are basically halfway in, so that looks good, that looks good. There we go, so, so there's one, let's, uh, let's do the rest. Cool. Looking good. <laughs> All right, onto the rudder now. <laughs> all right, everybody, there's all the hinges in um, into the control surfaces. So we have to let these dry now, and then uh, probably gonna let this dry overnight because we wanna make sure the vertical fin is dry and these hinges are dry before we actually insert it into there. So see you in the morning. All right, we're out here the next day. All the glue is dried, everything looks great. Got the vertical fin all glued up, really looks good. So now it's time to put them on the plane. So same process, really. We're just gonna put a little Vaseline on the hinge because we wiped a lot of it off yesterday when we were cleaning around it. So we're gonna put a little more Vaseline on, put mix up some more 30 minute epoxy, put it on the, the tooth part and just slip it in. We already did a dry fit, confirmed that everything fits. So you always wanna double check. All right, so I cleaned up the big globs before I pushed this in all the way. And you really just, as long as you did your dry fit correct, push this in almost just as far as it goes. And that's what the direction says, push it in as far as it goes we don't want it to dry like that, we're gonna tape it where it dries in this position. Hopefully the Vaseline globs do its job and doesn't lock up the hinge. So we'll see if we did this right. Let's do the other ones. Like the manual says, push it in all the way. And we've checked all this. There we go. Our gaps should be good. All right, onto the rudder. So like we just said, uh, the rudder's a little different. We got a, a light, so we gotta run a wire. Hangar 9 gives you a little string through the rudder. You gotta dig out your light from the parts bag. Just use the tape it came with. All right, so we got it taped up. Yep, like Mary said, we just used the little piece of tape that was on there. Let's see if let's see if it'll go through, because you can see the hole actually yeah. kind of takes a turn in there. Probably just takes a little bit of finagling. Twenty minutes later. Finally got the wire through, so Mary had to do it. I rage quit. But Mary got it. She has the patience for that type of stuff. So good job, Mary. Thank you. Let's see if this fits in there. So now we gotta get the wire all the way up to the front of the fuselage. There's no string going all the way, the whole length of the fuselage. So the manual recommends using a, a long rod or something. We just grabbed the elevator rod from the kit. So this is just one of the elevator rods. So it actually works. We tried it already. 
All right, Mary's got her camera in position. She's down there. I've got the elevator rod. Make sure you grab the right hole for the wire. And we're gonna feed this in. And there is a kind of a very specific spot that they want this to go through. Let's see if the I can get it. The top half of the bulkhead. Let's see if I can get this again. Yeah, you can see there's a platform back there. There, did I get it? I think you... Yes, you got it. So we just keep going straight so back. Just going slow. Nice and slow. Hold on. I, I got it. Okay. When we're ready, we're gonna tape the wire to the rod and, just... and pull the rest of the, pull it through. Okay, sounds good. All right, so let's get these hinges all epoxied up. All right, same as before. Got to put a little more Vaseline on here, same as before. Am I ready to pull this? Yep. I'm gonna start pulling. So she's gonna start, start taking up some of the wire slack. Well, actually all of it. <laughs> Looking good. Good. Keep going about six inches here still. All right, slow down. All right, I'm gonna start putting the pins in. Okay. That one got a little uh, off alignment. There we go. All right, pins are going in. We're gonna have some seepage. All right, I'm gonna get the majority of the big globs, so we'll leave that for a second. All right, so I just got the big, biggest parts of the globs. I'm gonna push the rest of the way in here, and the light is perfect position. I'm gonna pull on the No, you're good with the wire? light. Okay. Oh, you're good. So we got everything all glued up, just like before. Let's let all this glue dry, and we'll check it in the morning. Out here the next morning, we just pulled the tape. A little too much hinge gap for our liking. So with these Robart hinges, you really shouldn't have any gap at all. We have the solution, so not to worry. Um, we ordered up some, well, we actually have some uh, uh, Ultra Coat in the same colors. So this is how you fix it, guys. So come over to the other side, and we already kind of did our test fit. So what you do is you cut some strips of Ultra Coat, and you iron it in there. So you can see, this one is already done. So. And we cut little reliefs yeah. in the So you cut like a, a strip, so, so strip here, put a crease in it, and then you iron it in with a trim iron. So very baby iron. Yeah, and like Mary said, then you, we just make little relief cuts around the actual Robart hinges because it gets kind of ugly if you try to just seal around it but we're gonna do one on, on each bottom side and then we're gonna flip it over and do on the top side. But what this does is it seals up the hinge gap. And um, if you're not aware, you don't want a hinge gap or you would want as minimal as possible because you don't want air coming through there uh, when you're flying around basically. So we're gonna show you kind of what we did and what we're using. So we got our little hanger nine. This is called a trim iron so you can see it's just a little flat shoe for getting into really tight areas. We'll link it. Working really good. It's just very tedious. You gotta take your time, so I'm just gonna take the backing off. This is just ultra coat, so it's not sticky. So you get it kind of in position. Basically, you just wanna start tacking it down with the, the iron here. So we got it on high. 220 degrees is where the glue will activate on ultra coat, but not shrink. So you just kind of get it tacked into a couple spots here, just so it holds itself. So we have this little, looks like a little golf club pick. I have no clue where Mary got it, but it works awesome for this. Harbor Freight. It was oh, is this a, a Harbor Freight? Yeah, it was a pick, uh, oh, cool. pick set. So yeah, you can see it's a rounded, I don't know, I don't even know what to call it, a rounded pick. But what it does is it gets into these the edge here and helps you really kind of hold this. So we'll see if we can, like I said, this is really fiddly at first. Especially with the Robart hinges. Yeah, and you can see we have the, the hinge, the, the actual elevator itself at its max deflection. So when you're doing this, you want it at max deflection. So what we're gonna do, you can kind of feel where the, the Robart hinge is. You just kind of cut a little, little relief slot for it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so now we have a relief around there. So as you can see, this is extremely fiddly and pretty slow going, but you know, it's one of those things where you take your time and it's gonna come out looking pretty nice. But there you go. So you can see we did from about here to here and it's looking pretty nice around that hinge. So obviously we gotta do all this, just keep working it down. We're just gonna keep going on this and a uh, little montage time. <laughs> We gotta do the top of the wing or the top of the control surfaces now and we have to do the rudder also now the rudder has white and gray and a little red stripe so we got a little bit extra work on the rudder we'll get back to you when it's done you gotta put a piece of red there yeah so we got some pro trim ultra trim ultra trim so we're going with uh, the ultra trim this has a sticky back very, very close. Yeah. For just being in that channel, you're not gonna notice. There's one side of the rudder done. Looks pretty good. We chose a different technique on the rudder. We did individual strips. So getting the strips prepared takes longer, but when you actually seal them in, it goes quicker. So it's kind of hit or miss, but I don't know. They both, both techniques work. We did one long strip and then we cut out the knuckles on that one up to you. Will they both work? Let's flip the plane over. Mary's gonna do the other side. Yay. We finally finished sealing up all the hinge gaps. Everything looks great. It's extremely tedious, but it's well worth doing and it's a good habit to get into because uh, you don't want any hinge gap there. <laughs> we went the matched ultra coat route instead of just using the kind of clear tape. But um, yeah, it looks good. I'm pretty happy with it. Once we get all the wrinkles out of the actual, you know, control surface and everything, it's gonna look like a million bucks. Uh, we did the rudder also. Mary continued the graphics. I insisted. Through the joint. So it looks amazing. It's a nice uh, touch of detail when you continue the graphics, you know, through the, the joint. It's a pretty tricky, pretty tricky to do but looks great, came out great. <laughs> so that's the end of build video number three. Next video, we're gonna get into, I think it's servos and linkages and installing the receiver and all that type of stuff. So we're actually gonna get all this hooked up. Um, so yeah, we got some, uh, a lot of fun stuff ahead. Thanks for watching everybody. If you wanna follow along, just make sure to like, comment and subscribe and uh, ask us any questions or suggestions in the comments like always. Thanks everybody.